Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live 10 at 10. Our high heat and humidity is to blame for drivers left at a standstill tonight from a hole a few feet wide that developed across Interstate 29, shutting down all four lanes. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Krista Bame. All four lanes are now back open, but drivers ran into quite a delay at Interstate 29 traveling south at the 17th Avenue overpass. The North Dakota DOT says the road buckled, creating the gap, what they call a blow up. They are caused by high temperatures putting pressure on the road, causing the blow. Crews were out temporarily patching the road so drivers could get going again. A more permanent fix will come in the next month as crews continue scheduled construction on I-29, which includes closing the far left lane heading south there from Main Avenue to 32nd. We'll have more updates with Al on the Valley today. Moorhead's police chief says the department is behind the curve when it comes to several things, including programs like Fargo's Safe Cam. Safe Cam is a program that allows homeowners to register their security systems with the police force. As Valley News team Macy Anger found out, it's a program Moorhead neighbors say is needed. Like clockwork, you'll find a train passing through downtown Moorhead, heading towards Fargo and then West Fargo. Just as the rails connect all three cities, so do the police departments. One of these things we learn from each other. But recently, Moorhead looks to have missed the train. Be it social media or a lot of other things, I feel a little, little bit behind the curve on uh, what Moorhead's been doing. Unfortunately, you have to have people to staff those assignments, and we just don't have them. There's one program specifically the city does not have, but both Fargo and West Fargo do. Registering personal security cameras with the department. If there's a crime in the area, officers know exactly where to find the cameras and ask homeowners for footage. It'd be beneficial. It's always nice to have access to as many sources as possible for solving issues. We've been looking at different security options here in Fargo Moorhead to install in our home and if we did do that I would very much so want it, the police department involved with that. Homeowners say with the increase in crime across the area this could keep the neighborhood safer. If it got more people to put cameras up, I think that would. You know, anytime you have security cameras, I think it helps to deter. Whenever we have a serious crime, that's one of the first things the responding investigators do, is start working the area to find out where there's, where there's cameras, to see if there's any data out there. And this sounds like something that would facilitate that. The department says it's working to make changes and get back on track. In Moorhead, Macy Inger, Valley News Live. For more information on the Safe Camera program, we've attached a link to this story. Just head to valleynewslive.com. Deputies are looking for a person who walked into a convenience store carrying a rifle and stole cash at Cruise Inn Convenience Store in St. Hilaire last night and then burned their getaway car. The Pennington County Sheriff's Office says the suspect demanded the clerk get on the floor and took money from the safe. The suspect left the store in a van, which was later found burned just southwest of St. Hilaire. The person was wearing all black with a black face mask and black glasses and is believed to be a man. If you saw anything suspicious in that area last night, call the Pennington County Sheriff's Office. And more information is expected to be released tomorrow after two incidents that left multiple people injured this weekend in the area. One in Cass County where a man was taken to the hospital after a shooting Friday night. Police responded to two calls that were related, finding a 28-year-old man with a gunshot wound at the Brookwood Mobile Home Park in West Fargo. The injuries are non-life-threatening. And in Moorhead, four men were stabbed and one woman was cut after a fight involving knives broke out at a home on Friday. Police responded to 1816 Belsley Boulevard for eight people fighting. Alcohol was a factor to what police say is an isolated event. And we'll keep you updated on these stories on valleynewslive.com and our Facebook page. Just search Valley News Live, like our page, and you'll stay informed throughout the entire day. It's been three days since a gunman opened fire at a movie theater in Louisiana, and the governor there says the shooter should never have been able to buy a gun because of his history of mental illness. In 2008, court records show John Rusty Hauser's family had him involuntarily committed to a hospital in Georgia. 
It's not clear why it didn't turn up in the federal database. And as the community remembers the two women killed, investigators are working to confirm eyewitness reports that he visited at least three other theaters in recent weeks. Not sure as to why he settled in Lafayette or any motive. Valley News Live is hitting the road tomorrow, and we'd love to meet you. Join us as we ride the rails of the Red River Valley and Western Railroad. Monday and Tuesday, our team will do the newscasts live from the train. We'll be stopping in eight towns over the two-day trip. On Monday, we start in Breckenridge, and then we're off to Kindred. Up next will be Castleton, and then we'll be heading to Lisbon. On Tuesday, we'll be live from the towns of Lamore, Verona, Oaks, and Gwinner. Although we've been asked, there will be no rides available to the public. But you can come on out to meet our team. Just watch for Valley News Live Ride in the Rails tomorrow and Tuesday. A new kind of neighborhood directory is providing another way for you to get to know your neighbors. Valley News Team's Christine Stanwood meets with the user that launched this program for his community. For Charlie Hogstad, family comes first. Oh, good try, bud. And after they moved to South Fargo in 2012, he hoped to meet some new neighbors. Recently, Charlie found a free way to connect with his community with just a simple click after failed attempts with a neighborhood directory. That fizzled out. And so a couple months later, I just happened upon this website where you could do secure online connection with your neighbors. Um, so I jumped on that as an opportunity just to get to know people around us. Nextdoor.com became Charlie's new digital neighborhood directory. We've uh, been able to actually know who our neighbors are. We can know their names. Uh, our kids are very good at just going and playing and getting to know people. Charlie found that this site was not only safe, but it also incorporated local police. So we can have a better sense of what's actually going on in the neighborhood while at the same time communicating directly with the police. Police, um, which I found in the past to be somewhat difficult just through other channels that I found. For Charlie and his family, it's more about building a stronger community. It's been fun to see what started off as just me, like, oh, okay, I can, I can do this, I can actually set this up, All right, I'll give it a try, to now it's over, you know, 700-some people and a bunch of different neighborhoods around here. It's been fun to, to see that there are other people who share that same desire for connection. In South Fargo, Christine Stanwood, Valley News Live. Along with the Fargo Police Department, Nextdoor.com has partnered with West Fargo Police and the City of Kindred. If you want to learn more about this social network, just go to ValleyNewsLive.com and click on this story.